What is up guys, Nico here from Balsas Life and for today we are going to talk about the rumors about the Sony A5. All right, so there is a new camera being rumored to be announced mid-September and the rumors are it's going to be called either the Sony A5 or the Sony A6 and it will be a budget entry-level full-frame camera from Sony. This camera interests me so much because I have been longing to have a full-frame camera. Uh, I started with an APS-C camera back in 2009 when I started with interchangeable lens cameras with my Canon 550D and then when I saw full frame I preferred the look of full frame cameras as compared to APS-C cameras. I wouldn't say they're better in terms of quality, some would argue that but for me it's just a preference. I want the look of the full frame camera more. Now one big reason why I haven't had a full frame camera is the cost. Full frame cameras in general costs more than APS-C cameras and that is why this camera is catching my attention because it is rumored to be a sub $1,000 camera. Now if that's true, this will be cheaper than the higher-end APS-C cameras of Sony. Now, before we talk about that, why, why would Sony would do that? Let's have a rundown of the rumored specs. So, this is two parts. First are the specs that are supposedly coming from more reliable sources. These are more reliable sources that Sony Alpha rumors have dealt with in the past and then the second part are specification leaks that are coming from probably new sources that Sony Alpha rumors has right now. So for the more reliable sources specs leak, the A5 is said to have the same body size as the A6600. It has a mic input and a headphone jack. The specs are supposed to be similar to the A7 III. If that's true, I hope they don't include the autofocus because Sony's autofocus vastly improved from the cameras released 2019 onwards. So the A7 III is not part of that, is not part of the current autofocusing system that Sony has. They said the camera will be marketed towards vloggers and youtubers this marketing line has been thrown out a lot recently by camera companies when they're releasing their new camera so i don't really know what that means it will use an npfz 100 battery which is the same battery used in the a6600 and if i'm not mistaken the a7 series at least the newer ones for me, that's a positive thing because what we use in the A6400 is a NPFZ50 which drains really, really fast. It has the same articulating screen of the A7S3. That is going to be a wonderful spec to have. It has USB Type-C, single SD card slot, and it will have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Now. For the specs that are coming from the not-so-reliable sources, the new body design is similar to the A5000 and A6000 series, which is a mix of metal and plastic. No surprise there if this is going to be a sub-$1,000 camera. They have to cut cost on some of the material used. The grip is pretty large to accommodate the battery. If it's a size of the A6600, then I'm assuming that it will be the grip similar to the A6600. It will have a burst of 5 frames per second when using it for photography. They say it will have IBIS, although I am not excited about this because even in you know the higher-end cameras, A7 III, A7S III, Sony's IBIS isn't really that great, so in a budget entry level, 
even if they put IBIS, I would not be that excited about it. There will be no pop-up flash. That's fine with me. There is a pop-up EVF with 770,000 pixels. I don't really mind if they put an EVF or not because ever since I shifted my focus to video, I haven't used the EVF. I think I haven't used the EVF of the A6400. When I started photography back in 2009, I never used a screen when shooting photos, but when I started to switch to video, it reversed. I used the screen more rather than the EVF. And they say it also has the touchscreen capabilities of the A7S III, which I think they should really put in there because if they're marketing this to vloggers and YouTubers who are usually one man, one woman crew, then capability to change the settings from the front of the camera as opposed to going to the back and pushing the buttons is essential to that so i hope they really include touchscreen capabilities in changing the menu in the camera and they say it records 4k up to 24p and 30p 10 bit 100 mbps and you know i don't really mind if they don't do 10 bit because I do videos mainly for YouTube, which I don't really think would matter if you are shooting at 10-bit or 8-bit. And they said it even has 4K 60, but it would be very crippled. Like there will be a crop, it won't have sound and it will only be available in S and Q mode. Now let's talk about why I like this camera. Again, as I told you in the start of this video, I have been wanting to enter the full frame system before I wanted to go into the full frame cameras of Canon. Now that I've switched to Sony, I wanted to buy the A7s, the A7S, but it's really way out of my budget. I am not a professional videographer. I just, you know, want to do this as a hobby and then I transitioned into you know using the camera for YouTube videos so I don't really earn from creating videos not yet at least but I really want that full frame camera that full frame look but full frame cameras tend to be more expensive and full frame lenses tend to be more expensive than APS-C lenses now, a lot of people are asking, why is Sony doing this? Why would they release a full-frame camera that is cheaper than their higher-end APS-C cameras? Won't they cannibalize their APS-C line? My thoughts would be, no, they wouldn't be cannibalizing because there is still a market for APS-C camera users. And those camera users would see that if I buy this full frame camera, I would have to buy full frame lenses, thus making my cost not just with, you know, the camera or one lens increase, but if you want to add lenses in your kit along the way, then it will really be more expensive. So if you're not really a professional, if you're a hobbyist or you're just gonna use it for family videos, traveling, not really into you know high-end production stuff, then you will still opt to buy APS-C cameras that have good quality. Now, another reason why Sony is doing this is I think for long-time APS-C users like myself, they're trying to lure us in to the full-frame system because that's where they make their money. So they're trying to lure us by giving us a cheaper body, but then along the way, if you fall in love with the system, you're going to eventually buy the higher end camera bodies, especially if you've invested in full frame lenses already. So I'm excited for this announcement. They say it's going to be mid-September. I hope they stick with that because this year, Sony has flip-flopped on announcement dates. I hope they will stick with mid-September. 
And I hope that when they announce this and the specs are real and I like it, I hope they release the camera this year as well. So that's it for today here on Pulse's Life. A quick rundown of the rumored Sony A5 or A6 from Sony. If there will be any more major leaks before the announcement, I will probably give you an update. So please, if you haven't already, subscribe to Bosses Live and hit that bell notification icon so you get notified when we have new uploads here on the channel. Also, please like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and we will see you in our next video here on Bosses Live. See ya!